So today we're talking about the welcome table, AKA the short story by Alice Walker crafted after a well-known folk song, if you didn't know. Actually, I didn't know that. And after I learned it, I looked it up and I listened to several different iterations of it and wow, it, it's pretty powerful and catchy stuff. And while I was reading the story, I felt my foot tapping as I was kind of remembering some of the songs. Good stuff. Yeah, I guess it was used kind of as an anthem during the 60s civil rights movement. Let me read to you what the song's about, because I think it's relevant for our discussion today. But it says, The marriage feast of the Lamb referred to the New Testament book of Revelation. This event takes place when those who put their trust in Jesus Christ are joined with him in heaven. African Americans bound in slavery were never welcomed to their master's table, and this song echoed their hopes of the tables turning in future glory. Yeah, that just fits perfectly, right? I mean, a slave who is longing for freedom and turning to religion. And then if we think about the act of eating, it's very intimate. And I think that a slave coming to the table saying, you know, I just want to be a part of this conversation. I just want to be a part of this intimacy. I just want to be a part of our lives and us maybe be seen as equal because at the dinner table or breakfast table, we are sometimes seen as equal. And this is where conversation happens. And this is where ideas are traded. And it, it's a very cool story that uh, that is used from that music in this piece a lot to unpack there let's go through this because we open up with an elderly woman who is on the steps of this church with her blue brown eyes getting ready to enter uh, let's tuck away the the fact that her eyes are blue for a second here we're going to come back to it but she um is determined she, she's going on this crusade i should say to no. enter the church and is she welcome there sir Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, and we have this quote. And so they gazed nakedly upon their own fear transferred, a fear of the black and the old, a terror of the unknown as well as of the deeply known. So if we take this as 1960s segregated America, for our international viewers out there who maybe don't have the full history lesson, what was life like back then for someone who was a person of color crypto? Life was completely separate for everybody. So in segregated America, uh, white people and black people had separate drinking fountains, movie theaters, churches, stores. People of color couldn't go into certain restaurants. Everything is separated out. And even, even neighborhoods, you have people that lived in, quote, the white part of town and people that lived in other parts of the town. And they were not to mix. We had separate schools. Everything was separated out in our culture in certain parts of the United States during this time period. So when we talk about this, you know, fear transferred, they, they rattle off this list as they look at her, right? And, and they saw cooks, chauffeurs, maids, mistresses, children denied or smothered in the differential ways, yada, yada, yada. They're, they're projecting onto her all these things that they're afraid of or that they expect her to be, right? But they, they know nothing about this lady as she walks in. And she's, she's got her eyes fixated that, that church is for everyone. She's supposed to be going in, right? And to me, this is kind of her, I don't know if we want to call it like a crucifixion walk or whatever, but this, this is her hill that she's going to go on where she's willing, you know, it's dying for righteousness, dying for uh, uh, people's sins is what Jesus did, right? She's willing to put herself on the cross of racism, of saying that this place is for everyone, I belong here, and even as she's scowled at by the old ladies who are telling their husbands to throw her out, she continues walking in. Yeah, two things there. First, isn't it interesting that all of the things you rattled off are all usually some type of kind of subservient job that people have, or jobs that sometimes people look down upon, that those people are lesser than because they're serving somebody? I thought that was... Uh, an interesting list. And the other thing is, I found it kind of perplexing that who is it that is telling their husbands to not let her in? It's the other women. And I thought that it felt a little bit catty. I, I don't know. I, I And that's probably how it was. But you figure a lot of times people kind of stick together, right? We, we, we come together to kind of help each other. And oh, no, these, these ladies are not sticking up for her at all. And uh, it just kind of breaks my heart a little bit. You know, and it wasn't even Alice Walker's point, I don't think, here, but my mind was thinking about, you know, the, the crossing of religion and racism here. Because when you think about how some people have expressed concern or they're not able to fully 
embrace or understand what does original sin mean, right? Like, how can I be guilty of something someone else did, right? Like, like people will will say that, and it's it's a hard, it's a thing that people wrestle with, right? Right. And to kind of layer that almost with the the prejudiced aspect of this this woman who's walking into the church, we don't know who she's been or where she's been, what she's done. Right. But already they've got the scowls of you don't belong here. The you belong with the maids and the and the, the, the chauffeurs like she's being typecasted because of her race. Mm. And she's guilty of things that she hasn't even done. Right. And, and not that exactly. I think that that was Alice Walker's point, but I think it's something that, you know, you, you have to kind of question. Right. If, if it's so hard for us to understand some of those things. You know, we can see how how prejudiced and and racism can really be something that is hard to tackle the truth of. So one thing I kind of thought about of why this is such a great teachable piece is from what you said, if we think about humans being animals, we all kind of judge each other, right? I mean, we judge each other on our looks, uh, you know, for attraction and whatnot, for a mate. I mean, that that's primal. But I think this is a good way to show that something like racism is a taught behavior that these people, whether they're judging her or not, that's one thing, but they're literally judging her on her skin color and that she should be lesser than or she shouldn't be allowed in because of what she looks like. And that is something that is cultural. That's something that is taught. And that's something that has been in human society for thousands of years. It's been taught for a long, long time in many different generations, in many different cultures throughout uh, history. That's nothing unique to us or our time period. But I think it really just goes to show that this is something that is, that is passed down. And that's why that idea of original sin is like, well, I didn't do what my father did. But if you still believe the same things before, then maybe you are still guilty of those things. Tell me more about that last sentence. Well, the idea that you aren't responsible for the sins of your father or you inherit sin, think of it this way, if you benefit, say, from your previous generation, from some evil that they've done, and then you don't, you, you recognize that evil and you don't try to change it, are you still as guilty? Okay. Yeah. The subject discussed a lot today. Um, let's talk about how when she walks outside, because I do want to make sure we don't have an open end of the loop here with the blue. You'll notice the quote was under the old woman's arms, they raised their fists, flexed their muscular shoulders. And now she flew through the door back under the cold blue sky. So obviously she's calling out that it's blue. Her eyes were blue. Blue, if you didn't know from a Christianity uh, perspective, is associated with what crypto? And that, my sir, is Hevan. Indeed, indeed. And for those of you that are reading for the first time, might have been caught off guard of just like, oh, she's meeting Jesus. That's cool. Not realizing that she possibly has already died at this point in time, right? Like that's a, what we're kind of alluding to at the end of the story. And that goes back to that opening, you know, talk that we had about the marriage and the supper of the lamb and the consummation between, you know, Christ and the church. And um, it's kind of the, the second coming of Christ. And here you see her living the good life. She gets to tell how, you know, she kept on what she thought was the righteous path and how she kept pushing for what she believed to be right, not listening to other people who are probably corrupt and, and <laughs> who are definitely corrupt in the way that they're treating her. Oh, you always have such the nice positive outlook on these that she isn't some mentally ill lady that the people are <laughs> bashing in front of the church that she is already passed and she's going on to heaven with her savior. I love how optimistic you are. <laughs> it brightens my day. Well, I mean, at the end, they, they say like, well, we don't know what happened to her. We heard someone died by the side of the road, and it's at the side of the road when she meets Jesus. So theoretically, he's coming to take her to heaven is, is what yeah. I took as the implication. I like it. <laughs> so a sad ending, you know, the way that the men, you know, going back to when they threw her out, they didn't just throw her out. They had the the clenched fists, right, which which is a symbol of violence and aggression to to have this be the final moments of her on Earth. But for her to still maintain her dignity, the belief that she'd be able to return to the table, the whole point of the story and the folk song, I think Alice Walker crafted yet another perfectly rounded story that I, I think I think has its purpose. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our discussion tonight on The Welcome Table by Alice Walker. Playlist down below. Smash that like button. We appreciate all your support. Crypto out. Peace.